Toshiba laptop in that um, the problem with it is what they've been doing they've been running it on an external monitor and the socket for the um, external monitor has come loose and um, he says he has to wiggle it around to get a picture um, so it's been brought in for repair now it's not in the best of shape this uh, laptop it's um, pretty filthy and uh, when I open it up I can get into it as you can see there's no display on it uh, and that's why it's been run on a um, external monitor there's also quite a few keys missing off the uh, the keyboard one two three four keys missing oh no three keys missing there off the um, off the keyboard um, so we're going to uh, an attempt to repair on this if it was me I'd just wang it in the dustbin and get a new one but it's been brought in for repair it's uh, in a bit of a state it's covered in fag ash and dust and I don't know where they've been using it but anyway Let's uh, take it apart and see if we can do anything with this um, VGA socket. Um, see where it's attached to the motherboard and where it's come away and why it's loose. So we'll get this on the bench and uh, we'll have a look. And it looks as though as well around the fan unit there that there's actually some melted wax or something or a melted sweet or something red and sticky. Nice. So uh, yeah, let's get it on the bench and uh, we'll have a look. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove uh, the battery. Put that to one side, and then we're going to remove all these screws out of uh, out of the unit. Remove the uh, hard drive and the memory out, and I'll just quickly just show you how to uh, how to do that. So we need a Phillips screwdriver. I'm just going to whip these uh, covers open. Like so. Now this will expose the uh, the memory and it also exposes the uh, the wireless card. And then this one here should expose the hard drive. Okay. Have a look. Make sure there's no other screws in there. And you slide that back. And remove that out. And put that safely to one side. And we're just going to uh, pop the memory out. safely to one side like so now it's just a case of uh, removing all the screws out of here so that we can uh, expose the motherboard so I'll whip those screws out now and get to, get to the motherboard uh, I'm sure you don't want to uh, watch me removing screws so I'll do that now and then we'll come back okay so we've removed the board now and what a pain that was to get out. You had to remove the fan and everything and there was a, a screw down here somewhere that was holding it in that I didn't spot. And But anyway, it's out now and um, this is the culprit here. This is the, uh, the problem we've got and as you can see it's got quite a bit of wobble on it. Now let's just have a look see how it's fixed to the board. And it doesn't look like it's fixed at the back. So let's have a look under this uh, shield in. There we go. Oh, look at the gunk on there. Bits of tobacco and bits of food. Nice. It'd be tetanus job when I finished on this job. Um, right, so where are we at? Uh, this. Now it looks as though. This is fixed through the uh, through the board. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to whip um, whip these bolts off so I can remove this shield. 
and then uh, we can get to the terminals at the back here and then we can see what the problem is I can't quite make out whether the actual pins are moving or whether the actual pins that come through here which are attached to the ground plane have actually snapped and that's why it's moving but I can actually see that one moving in the socket there I don't know if you can see that on the camera I'll bring it in close enough this one here if I give it a wobble it, it's actually moving in the socket there so it might just be a case that we need to give it a reflow and see if we can um, support the back of this to stop it um, moving in future um, I suspect what's happening is it's being plugged in and then being dragged around with it plugged in rather than it staying fixed in one place and that's um, what the problem is there uh, okay so what I'll do then I'll just whip these out and then we can uh, we can have a look at uh, repairing this board so I've got this um, under the microscope again so we can see it because these terminals are that small um, as I say I've got a problem with this I can't zoom in any more than, than this at the moment normally I can zoom right in and, and bring these pins to like the whole size of the screen um, but for some reason I've got this on, a, on a, another system at the moment because we've had a move around and um, I can't zoom in for some reason so I don't know what's what's going on there but anyway that's uh, no worries we can work with that um, so we're just having a look now, see if we can see any uh, any damage. And I can see on the screen that uh, the solders broke away here on this one, and here on this one. And it looks as though that one, that one, are broken as well. So the solder joints have broke away. And the tra traces in the, are still intact. It's just the solders um, wobbled itself loose, and with it just being like a soft lead solder, it's um, snapped away so I think it's just a case of uh, straightening that up so that it's straight on the uh, on the board and uh, just giving that a reflow and I think that will probably be good to go so I'm just going to um, put a bit see if this light makes a bit of difference on there not really It's a little bit better on my view. Um, so yeah, so uh, first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to uh, secure the board so that it can't skid around when we're working on it. And I'm just uh, having a look now which way I'm going to work with this. I think as we are, we'll be good I think. I think we can work with that. That's so all I'm going to do. Just going to get a bit of this uh, surgical type tape, and I'm just going to literally tape the board down to stop any movement. As you can see, I mean, it wouldn't stop it from moving completely if I gave it some force, but it just stops it skidding when I put an iron on it. There's nothing worse than when you've, uh, when you've got an iron on it, and it starts skidding around. Okay, look, I've covered that, um, that piece up there. Just hang on, let's redo that piece. Right, so um, let's have a look. Can we get in with a hot air gun for those little pins? 
probably not with a microscope on. We just change that tip out for a smaller one. Yeah, I can just, just get in there with that, just to um, get a bit of an angle there. Let's see, first thing I'm going to do anyway, I'm just going to change this tip out. I'm just going to put a smaller tip on. So we can... Uh, the best one. Small flats on the side. Half conical, half flat. That'll do. Right, so we'll just uh, whack the iron on, get that up to temperature. Probably want that set round about for this. Probably about 220, 220, 225, somewhere round about that. We'll be at 230. I'm just going to drop that down just a little bit to 25. something like that. We're using um, lead free solder. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply some uh, flux. all these terminals so they're all nice and clean ready to accept some solder now this is a, a no clean flux that I use this makes things a little bit easier especially on small boards they're a lot less uh, finishing work involved. Let's remember you can never uh, put too much flux on. But I always use flux for uh, for this sort of joint work. Now I'm also using a, uh, a four core um, flux uh, no clean solder as well. So first thing we do is get a tip of wipe and I'm just going to the, re-tin the tip. Shake off any excess. So you've got a nice uh, clean tip. That's a bit blurred that's gone under there. So let me just uh, see if we can get a bit of a better picture there. See a bit better now. Okay, and the first thing I'm going to do, always remember if you're working with a microscope, bring your um, your piece into the work first and pause to see so you can get a judge of where it is, and then you can bring it down to where you want to work. apply some solder. Is that a ground plane that that's on? I think it might be. And 
I'm going to bring that iron up just a little bit as well. It's struggled in just a bit there with the, uh, the amount of uh, small tip. Okay, I'm going to bring that up to uh, 235 there. Thereabouts. Tip a wipe. And then we'll go again. I might have to bring that other light in actually because I'm struggling a bit here to see once my hand comes in. Solder. You know what? The only problem with using small tips is it's bloody difficult to get the heat into the joints straight away. Bring that up another five degrees. And the other option here is that it isn't lead free. Um, thing. It looks like lead free, it's got a shine to it. Look like lead free. Once you get the uh, the heat into it, it then starts to flow. There we go. So we've got two nice fillets on there now. And already, that stopped, uh, stopped the wobble. So all I'm going to do now, I'm just going to uh, fire the hot air gun up. And I'm just going to run uh, the hot air across this. And I'm just going to uh, reflow the joints. I'm not going to add any more solder to it. I'm just going to reflow them. A little bit more uh, flux, and we'll just reflow those as well. She's set at 4:30. Probably a little bit high that. I'm going to bring it down to about 300. temperature now. Now you could if you wanted to take the um, take these other components off but for what it is and what I'm doing I'm not going to be uh, touching any of the other ones. What I'm going to be doing is just reflowing these pins again. Let's go over warm the board slightly. And now we're reflowing. And 
it almost looks as though these pins here where we've reflowed it, the solder has actually flowed away from the joints. You can see. If you can see that in the uh, camera, yeah. You can see that on the camera. We've just gone, uh, gone dark. So all I'm going to do now, I'm just going to apply a bit more flux to them. And then I'm just going to apply some solder. To those joints as well. So, let's just get the iron again. The secret here is nice clean iron. Give it a wipe on a damp sponge, shock any um, Rod off. And the attempt. A bit of solder so we go. we've added a bit of solder now and then what I'm going to do again I'm just going to uh, apply a little bit of heat that's the um, I'm just going to turn that air down a little bit Okay, I'm just going to give that a clean up now, just so we can see um, what's what and where we're at. Give me a little brush. Why don't we give me a little brush then? A little brush somewhere for cleaning the... Um, Should be. Now this isn't a, a tutorial as such, it's just um, along for the ride I guess. I'm just going to let that cool a little bit. And I'm just going to give that a brush. see by that they're all good and it looks as though they're all separated but I'm just going to um, 
couple of meter on there just to uh, check we've got no um, no touching contacts there so all I'm going to do I'm just going to go across if you look on the screen here it looks those those are really really close like this one And that one, I've got nothing on there, I'll go to the one next to it. So I'm just having a look now to see if there's anything we can do with this. As you can see now we've, um, if you can get that with that light, we've uh, soldered this all back on, if I hold the board now. That's solid as a rock that is, there's no uh, no movement in there, just a bit of flex on those pins at the back. And as I say there's a, like a piece of rubber on the back of here, a piece of sponge rubber, and it looks as though that sits up against something to stop it, um, stop it from being bent back. So I'm just having a look now, and the only thing I can see is it sits here between the uh, these two two pieces here and there's um, a speaker here and throw that through there a minute if you put that that way up and that's how it actually sits when the uh, the top covers on so it'll sit in the uh, bottom board and then sits on the top cover and there's nothing yeah I can actually see there's nothing through there I can actually see through there and there's a there's a gap probably about half an inch between there and the back of this speaker so I don't think there's really a lot we can do with that it's just a case of that's how it is and there's nothing we can do as you can see it sits about here and then uh, there's all that travel all the way back to here although there is this this piece here that it would hit but you know it can still twist on the one side um, so I don't see, really see that we can do anything other than possibly maybe packing that out there but then what's that slot for there something going in and sit down into there yeah I think that keyboard cover clips into there and locks down so yeah so yeah I think there's not uh, not a lot we can do with that we're just gonna have to go with that as repaired and there's not really anything we can do to stop it happening in the future it's just um, one of those bad designs it's probably not designed to be used that often and uh, that's just the way it uh, the way it goes unfortunately okay so I'm going to go uh, get these back together and um, then we can give it a test uh, but that's going to be tomorrow now when I put it back together so uh, if you've ever got uh, a repair of uh, a VGA socket, that's the way to fix it. Give it a reflow if it is uh, if it's just um, broke its solder joints, and that should solve your problem. So thanks for watching. If you like my videos, don't forget to hit that like button, and if you hit the subscribe button, you'll get updates as and when we put new videos up. So my name's Darren. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again.